One of my all-time favourite Christmas films is the 1994 Miracle on 34th Street. I absolutely love it. And I've seen the original as well, and I rather liked it too, so I figured it was about time that I checked out the 1973 version. This was a made-for-television film directed by Fielder Cook, and it follows a very similar narrative of a, a man who is claiming to be Santa Claus, to be the real Santa Claus. We, as the viewer, kind of know he is the real Santa Claus, or at least I do. I don't know if that's 100% how everybody feels, but certainly I've never had any doubt in my mind. Um, and he's hired by Macy's department store. Interestingly, on that note, Macy's was allowed to, they let their name be used in this film. It was known that he was hired by Macy's. I believe in the 1994 version that wasn't the case. I'm not 100% sure why. If anybody knows why, please do let me know. Maybe they didn't like this film and they didn't want to be associated with another version of it. I don't know. But either way, he's the Santa Claus for this department store. He's claiming to be the real Santa Claus. And a lawsuit follows because one very nasty individual thinks that this man should be sectioned. Basically, this Chris Kringle, who claims to be Santa Claus, couldn't possibly be the real Santa Claus. So he's going to take him to court to try and get him committed. Will he succeed? It's a very similar narrative to the previous version and also the 1994 version. And the narrative flows pretty well. I kind of liked it. I think it took a little while to get to the court case. It took I don't know if it took longer than the 1994 version, but it certainly felt longer. It felt like it was dragging its heels a little bit. So the narrative, although interesting, could have been paced a little bit better. I think certain things dragged on for too long, and then maybe certain aspects were glossed over a little bit too much. With regards to this Kris Kringle, I honestly didn't really like him very much. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the performance by Sebastian Cabot. I think he did a great job with the role. I think the character he was portraying was consistent. I think a lot of his motivations were believable. He just didn't... He didn't feel like Santa Claus to me. And something I've said before is Attenborough's Santa Claus in the 1994 version is my Santa Claus. Whenever I think of Santa Claus, that's, that's who I envision. He is my Santa Claus. So... I'm aware that I was a little bit biased and that nobody would be able to fill those big boots for me. But at the same time, I feel like he just wasn't positive enough. Not that he was a completely negative character or that he had a negative disposition as such, but I feel like he was a little bit too rough around the edges, a little bit brash sometimes. I don't mind the way he interacted with Susan, but it didn't have that same warm, fuzzy feeling that both either the other two films had. So I feel like the character was maybe written a little bit differently and it just didn't sit right with me. Had I never seen any other version before, it probably wouldn't have stood out. But because I had high expectations, it was something that I couldn't avoid noticing. Um, generally, it was enjoyable. It felt quite festive. But again, not as festive as the 1994 version. And I know it's probably unfair to compare it especially since this predates it by ju oh, just over two decades. But when you see how this narrative is done effectively, you can't help but look at it and think, well, you could have done better. You could have done a lot better. Um, I did love Alfred, played by Gary Greenberg. Um, I thought Alfred was a brilliant character. He added a lot to this, and I loved the way that Chris King... Chris... Chris Kringle? I'll just call him Santa. I loved the way Santa supported him and stood up for him. I thought that was a beautiful, brilliant thing, and that aspect of this I loved. I'm not going to say how it ends or how they, what case is presented for Santa Claus, but I actually found it to be very moving and very effective and quite beautiful. So it did kind of regain its favour at one point. So it's not all a loss. If you're a fan of either of, either of the two versions, um, I believe there are only two other versions, then I would say get definitely watch it because you will enjoy the same kind of narrative, but I don't think it's the same kind of quality. It's still worth watching though. It's a nice Christmas film. It's not as festive as it could be, but certainly it's one that could get you in the Christmas spirit and put a smile on your face any time of year.